Hey writers, I wanted to get this video out to you much earlier, but if you can hear my voice, I was a little sick. Feeling much better though, so I am super excited to bring you this video that's sort of like a sequel to last year's video where I shared how I became a full-time writer in one year. So this is sort of how the second year went, um, just my main highlights, but also how I crushed my top three goals and how I also dealt with some failure along the way. Also, if you've heard of my author website bootcamp, I am running a Christmas slash New Year's discount between today and tomorrow. So if you stay till the end, I'll be giving you the code to that discount as well. But first, let's take a look at a couple spreads in my bullet journal that are going to help me sort of outline what my three main goals were for the year, how I went about tackling them, and also some of the failure I experienced in trying to reach for these goals and how I dealt with it. If you want to know even more about my process and how I plan for my year, I actually created a whole workbook with an eight-step strategy that I used last year and I'm also using this year for my patrons on patreon.com. So if you want to check that out, you will get access to that workbook to use for yourself. And also I created a workbook to not only look forward, but to also look back on our 2019 with gratitude and celebration. So we basically broke down each month of the year and highlighted memories and things we could be grateful for and things we could celebrate. It's so easy to just sort of move forward and forget all that was good in the past and that can end up coloring how we move into the future. So I'm really excited that we got to do this and it also helped me particularly look back on my year and realize what kind of things helped me reach my goals for the end of the year. So let's get back to that main spread with my 2019 goals and I'll first go over what the goals were and if you notice again I only had three main goals under three main categories and this is part of my eight step strategy where I try to narrow down what are the one to three main things I really want to accomplish in a year. Anything else is bonus. It doesn't mean that I don't do anything else throughout the year but what are the three main things that if I accomplish I'm going to feel like a success. Another reason I only have three is just to have focus. Um, I think when I was first starting this out, I would have a list of like 20 goals. And yeah, sometimes I had like little categories and stuff. Um, but it was just unfocused. And I would say, Oh, well, if I got this many goals done, then I was a, a success. But then I wasn't really shooting for the main things that I really wanted. And I didn't know what the priorities were. And I just feel like with these kind of sort of focused and fewer goals, um, I can have a lot of those smaller goals that sort of help me get to these things. But if those smaller goals don't end up getting me here or aren't moving me in these directions, then I know not to prioritize them. And if I get them done, great. But if not, then they can be pushed aside because ultimately they're in the way of the three main things that I really want to do. So I created three main categories, publishing, platform and income and then created a goal based on each of those categories and sort of parts of my author journey not just writing and publishing but there's also again author platform and marketing and just growing your readership and then for me I am full-time my husband wonderful wonderful husband um, does make the majority of the money that we need for our household um, but we as I said in last year's video sort of came to an agreement that if I could make a certain monthly income income going forward, helping out our household, and potentially when we have children um, that I would be able to work from home, then uh, we both agreed that that would be a okay place to then continue to be a full-time author and writer um, with having my income come from being able to resource the writing community or any other writerly uh, related things so I can still stay in this realm and I don't have to work outside of author stuff which has been a blessing and also something that I have had to navigate. So that can be a whole other video. I talk a lot about side hustles and income and stuff with my patrons. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to doing a video this year, more about how all of this has been going. But let's suddenly start with my publishing goal. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've been working on my work in progress on Wings of Ash and Dust, which is a YA fairy fantasy. And this past year, I I really wanted to end the year either ready to query 
or um, having a self-publishing plan. And so I actually did both of these this year. Um, I am definitely ready to start querying and entering. I've already entered um, a mentorship contest and probably going to enter another one in February. Um, but I've also created a self-publishing plan for myself, actually pretty detailed. I just shared it with some of my patrons um, and I'll probably be sharing that more as this next coming year comes. Um, but basically I got to a place that I can sort of start pursuing both of these and um, this year part of my goal a little preview for you guys for the next video where I share my goals is that I want to figure out this year um, which avenue I'm definitely going to be going in so what did I actually do this year let's back up a little bit um, in January I worked with my critique partners that's what CP means and I edited PFF um, which was the original sort of working title project fairy fantasy so I worked on edits with my CPs and that was really helpful. In February, um, I prepped for Author Mentor Match, which is a um, mentorship competition. Um, and then uh, in March, this is one of my failures, I did not end up entering. And um, I'm just going to pause here for a second because this was still, even though it was technical failure, I still see this as a win because um, I prepped the heck out of this. I did write a query. I did get my manuscript in pretty good shape, but I still just didn't feel like it was ready. Um, but I still learned a lot from that process. I learned a lot from even just prepping, um, researching the different mentors and um, starting to think about agents. Um, I also got some critiques during that time. And it was just all around, even though I failed at this specific like one little thing, this still helped me get ready to then um, query. So I still count it um, as a win. And that's what I just want to encourage you guys with is that failure is not really failure if you learn from it. It's actually the best teacher you can have. And it, basically, if you aren't failing, you aren't growing, you know, you're just staying where you're at. And failure actually means that you're reaching farther and faster. And um, again, if you're learning from it, you're actually growing from it. Um, so I just want to encourage you guys to actually fail faster. I talked about this in a recent video a little bit, but I have a mastermind group, which um, is actually written over here, um, which I'll talk about in a little bit that we meet every single week. And one of our mantras is fail faster because statistically every big success had to go through a lot of failure. So why not get through that failure as fast as possible to actually reach that success? So all of that to say, I have so much more to share, but all of that to say that as I talk about my failures, that's how I chose how to see them. Um, I really hoped that I wasn't going to fail for these big things, but it was okay if I didn't technically um, win at my original plan um, as long as I learned from it and as long as it helped me get to these eventual big goals. So let's move on. Um, quarter two, so you see I've separated this into the four quarters of the year. Quarter two, um, I chose my beta readers. I got my manuscript to a place that I felt I was ready for betas and um, I did some edits uh, to prep for that. Then in the next month um, I started beta reading and this was another minor failure but I think I had planned like oh I'm gonna get through betas in like a month, a month and a half or so and it ended up taking as you can see almost I think it was um, all together. I think I started halfway through the month here and halfway through the month here. So it was like three or four months to get through it. Um, so it took a lot longer than I expected, which pushed my timeline, my personal timeline back. Um, I wanted to do multiple uh, rounds of betas this year and only ended up doing one. But you guys, I learned so, so much from um, just doing this one beta round. My betas were awesome. I actually did a whole video series on how I found my betas, how I ran my beta rounds, how I took their feedback and all that kind of stuff, which I can link down below. Um, but anyway, again, even though it didn't go according to my original like game plan, um, I still learned so much from this and it did help me get to my original big goal. So then um, the next month uh, in September, Pitch Wars hit. And this is another mentoring competition. And even though I didn't get to make Author Mentor Match, I did make Pitch Wars. And I've been wanting to submit to Pitch Wars for a long time. So this was a huge 
huge win. And again, I got critiques. Um, my query got even stronger. My first pages got e even stronger. Um, learned more about as I interacted with the community online and Twitter and YouTube, uh, just learning about um, sort of the process of querying because basically you had to query to these mentors, which was very similar to how you would query an agent. And yeah, it was just a big milestone for me. So I was really excited about it. Um, you can tell in quarter four, um, I didn't actually write this down but I didn't end up getting picked for pitch horse um, but again that's okay because that having these two experiences again got my query to a really good place and again I did get critiques and um, helped me get to this final goal here um, in October though I did prep for a new project because they always encourage you to be working on more than one um, say your book gets picked up and um, then it gets published but they definitely want another one soon after you don't want to have nothing going on um, or if you're self-publishing same kind of thing you get one out everybody's gonna want your next one um, and you want to keep your readers engaged so I'm really excited about this new project and it was a really great break from basically working on on Wings of Ash and Dust the whole year um, and uh, really excited about this other fantasy kind of very loose retelling that I am working on here. For NaNoWriMo I wrote the draft for Project Snow um, and I am going to say officially that I did not f hit 50,000 words for NaNoWriMo. I'm actually super close to hitting 50,000 words now that is December. Um, my goal was actually to hit 50,000 words in 14 days in NaNoWriMo and that is because I went to New Zealand with my husband so we took this awesome trip um, I actually have a whole vlog about it we went to Hobbiton which was another dream come true and it was just so awesome um, yeah so I knew I wasn't gonna have all the time in the world in November to write um, Project Snow but I did reach 45k which is a feat in and of itself and again even though I didn't reach Nano again my main goal was to get ready to query or to um, have a self-publishing plan so um, that got sacrificed a little bit so I could um, do this but um, I still made a lot of progress and I feel like next Camp Nano I'm going to be um, in really good shape to write the next draft of Project Snow. Finally, in December, I entered PitMad for the first time, and that is um, not a mentorship contest, but more of an agent contest. They do it four times a year, um, so I'm definitely looking to enter it again, but that was really great because you actually had to write pitches um, that is only a tweet long for your work in progress for agents to like and request more. I did not get requests by agents, but again, I have like three to five pitches that I feel pretty solidly about. I got Got a lot of retweets um, and a lot of likes so if any of those retweets or likes came from you guys as you're watching thank you so much for doing that your support means so much um, but that was just such a great experience and again I learned a lot about agents and pitching and the traditional sort of market um, by researching for that but at the same time I created a self-publishing plan and I have to give super props to my dear friend and critique partner Bethany Atazada who just has videos upon videos about self-publishing and I also watched a few more from like Mandy Lynn and I know Meg from iWriterly is self-publishing this year so I watched some of her stuff and a few others and just binge watched this month and created a very detailed self-publishing plan that sort of mirrors my traditional publishing plan again I'll show you this in the video I'm going to put out in the new year with my 2020 goals but um, at some point those two plans sort of diverge and uh, based on a few things I'm going to pick one or the other but at least I will have a plan that I'm ready to follow. Um, and I think I'm just going to put it out here just for fun. Um, but my biggest plan next year is either to um, find an agent or a mentor or to be able to self-publish um, on Wings of Ash and Dust by early 2021. So for any of you that have made it this far in the video, that's a little spoiler for the next video. Super, super exciting. I cannot wait. Uh, you guys can school with me in the comments. Anybody that has been with me in this journey for a long time, um, I'm super excited. So definitely keep an eye out for that next video so you can hear all the details. 
Next, let's talk about platform. And again, I made this a important goal of mine because it's great if you publish a book, but if you don't have readers ready to uh, not only read it, but review it right away, then your sales and your rankings and all of that kind of stuff um, won't be as high. And so what I've learned from my other author friends that have published before me um, is basically to start as early as possible with your platform and grow it as much as you can so that when you do publish, you have a whole plethora of people that are excited to support you and to read your books and to become uh, fans of your books. So um, for my platform, it wasn't super detailed, but I just wanted to continue growing my following and my network um, of author friends as well. And the big reason this wasn't like super specific is because um, I had already grown my platform a decent amount and all I wanted to keep doing was just um, putting in place sort of um, habits that would help me continually grow and I'm going to show you um, in a few minutes uh, what my final numbers were um, because uh, that actually happened so um, I did have a few mile markers here but I also noted that just every month I tried to do four to four YouTube videos um, one newsletter and then every week I wanted to do at least one Instagram post one tweet a week which I got better at throughout the year and did even more than that and then also um, um, Instagram stories has been a huge part of my platform as well in addition to using my author website um, and different stuff like that which is connected to my newsletter and actually let me just show you the numbers right now which are just really exciting and I've put these in pencil because um, they it's not the end of the year yet and I want to put the final uh, numbers but for Instagram I grew from beginning of the year to end of the year 1700 followers to 3000 followers um, YouTube was really exciting I started out with 8000 subscribers and reached um, almost over 3,500 subscribers. So I more than tripled uh, my subscribers for YouTube. And that means all of you guys. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely feel free to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything coming up. But you guys, you are just amazing. And this has been awesome uh, to see this growth and just so encouraging. So thank you for being here. Um, Twitter, I uh, was struggling a little bit at 526 uh, followers, but seriously, if especially if you are looking at uh, traditional publishing, a lot of these numbers came from interacting pitch wars, pit mad, um, some author mentor match stuff, um, all of those kind of things that go on uh, on Twitter. If you can um, get connected to that and make friends through that, um, that's when these numbers really started to grow. And um, they also really started to grow a lot faster um, after I hit 1k. So just a little tidbit, I do have a whole video um, with Meg Latour from iWriterly with a bunch of Twitter tips and I we also have a video about Instagram tips. Um, I'll try to link those below for you guys as well if you want to grow on those platforms. But that has just been really exciting uh, for me because Twitter has uh, been harder than these other platforms for some reason for me. Um, with my newsletter, this was another big jump. Um, I grew from 669 um, subscribers to over 2,000 subscribers in my newsletter. And again, I don't have any books officially published yet. Um, and I've only been at this for a couple years. So I actually have a whole video uh, that explains how I met about 1800 subscribers in my first year of having my newsletter. So if you want a bunch of tips um, and different stuff like that about newsletters and you're struggling with that, definitely check that out. But let's get back to um, just different mile markers that I hit during the year and different things that helped. So I hit a thousand subs on YouTube in January. Um, I also listed this under platform um, because of more networking, but it also helped my platform was joining a mastermind group, um, which I talked about in a recent video a little bit, and I'm going to be talking about um, in January some more, but it's basically me and three other author friends who meet every single week on Skype and encourage each other and not only talk about our writing goals, but also our income goals and business goals. And so that has been super helpful. We give feedback for each other. And so a lot of the different things in these two columns um, that I have sort of tried or uh, developed this year has been a direct result of just getting uh, feedback and encouragement from these ladies. So I'm going to list their names right here because they're just amazing and uh, just really thankful that I started that in February. 
We might also do a live stream where we talk about how we started our group, what we do, and steps that you can take to start your own mastermind group. So again, make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss that. The next thing um, was another YouTube thing. Uh, Bethany and I, and a lot of you who are probably sick of me talking about it because I talk about it in almost every video, we did a experiment where we took Save the Cat Writes a Novel, um, which is a novel craft book, and um, did like a 10-week series of plotting a novel from start to finish using uh, the steps in Save the Cat Writes a Novel. Um, so this was really huge because there were a ton of live streams and a ton of engagement and it just built on itself and it was 10 weeks long on YouTube. So that's really a big thing that helped me grow um, my YouTube channel this year. So thank you, Bethany, for doing that with me and thank you everybody who um, was a part of that. It was so much fun and I'll link that down below in case you missed it. Um, and we continued that into April. And then in May, you can see that I read 4,000 hours of YouTube watch time, which if you have no idea what that means, basically you need a thousand subscribers and at least 4,000 hours of video watch time in a year to become monetized. Um, so YouTube, you do for free, um, but if you reach these two mile markers and you get accepted by YouTube, then, um, then you can get monetized and actually make not a ton of money, but at least something uh, from YouTube. And so I have a little arrow that um, says that I started making money from that um, here. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but that was just like a huge mile marker. Again, sort of came on the tail end of doing that Save the Cat experiment, which was so great. Uh, another networking thing is in, uh, what's this, June. Uh, I went to BookCon, which was so much fun. Got to connect with a lot of friends. Um, this and then also the Wander Writers Retreat. Again, we're just big networking opportunities um, and just friend making opportunities and just awesome awesome all of these ladies um, and people that I met at both of these events um, are just still close friends and we just help each other out and encourage each other so much um, so that was just huge I do have vlogs for both of these events that I'll link down below so if you want to check out what exactly those things were like and if you're interested in like attending a writer's retreat um, or attending something like book con you can sort of get an overview of what that was like you can see a few holes too in some of these months where I didn't have like specific things going on because I was like prioritizing betas or prioritizing um, some of my income streams which is okay you know you need to make space in order to not have everything going on at once um, but I also did continue to do these things down here and then um, in November I hosted a sort of Harry Potter themed NaNoWriMo cabin on Instagram so we called it the NaNoWriMo house cup and uh, that was really fun it's just to encourage everybody um, as they're writing for, for NaNo and making friends um, so that was definitely like a platform thing that was really great and then in December um, I did an awesome Christmas uh, we called it the 12 writing tips of Christmas collab video um, and so different things like that collabing with other authors again networking and also helping um, my platform that was just really great to do and if you're looking for a bunch of really great writing tips um, you can watch my video uh, there I'll link that below and then there's a bunch of other authors that did this collab as well and shared their own writing tips so if you're looking for a bunch of writing tips from some awesome authors definitely check that out finally let's focus on income and my main goal for income was to hit a certain amount each month and I just blocked that out for privacy sake and I did hit that amount every month which was awesome and that was from basically three different income streams that I have going on right now um, one of them is YouTube so that sort of started in the summer that I started getting paid from that which was really great um, another was patreon which I've mentioned before and um, this is just really awesome again if you are looking for even more insider help than just my YouTube videos you want one-on-one -on -one help specifically I talk a lot about platform I do talk about side hustles and income as well and then I obviously talk about writing and publishing but I'm still also experiencing this for myself so you learn everything I'm learning as I go um, and all the mistakes I'm making as well um, but then as I um, publish and do a bunch of other things and learn more here that will also become even more a part of my patreon so I just love teaching I love mentoring I love helping people get to the place that I've already been which is basically what mentoring is so if you are looking for that and even more um, helpful resources like I mentioned before 
you can check that out. But I um, was very tentative about launching this. Um, I wasn't sure if it was something that people wanted. And this year it has been a huge part of my income stream and just really fun and really awesome and just totally aligned again with not only my goals, but who I am um, internally as a teacher and as someone who just loves helping people. So that was really awesome. The third income stream that I have is actually helping authors create their author website and newsletter that grows their platform and readership in leaps and bounds, just like me, even if they don't have any books published yet. So um, what I was doing most of this year was um, creating websites for individual clients basically had one client a month for most of the year but then i was also running um boot camps author website boot camps that's what that stands for um which was basically a five week live course that i taught authors how to build their website from start to finish with wix.com and their newsletter and how to not just build it and make it look awesome but utilize it um, with their platform to grow their readership like i said before so i was sort of piloting this at the end of 2000 18 and finished that first boot camp up in January. Then I sort of took some time to learn from what how that went and it went really well. Um, I made a few improvements and did it again in June. So this was round two. Um, you can see a bunch of the testimonies and finished web websites on uh, the testimonials page on my website if you want to check those out. And then after doing two rounds of it, um, I got a lot of really encouraging feedback from those that took it. I had a lot of people that were actually asking, hey, can can you make this an auto course so that I can take it any time and doesn't have to be at specific times in the year. So I heard that and I did um, a lot of uh, sort of tweaking and um, used teachable.com to create an auto course uh, for author website bootcamp. So now um, I launched that in October and that went really well. And now you can purchase the course at any time, take it at your leisure. And actually I am offering sort of a Christmas New Year's discount today and uh, until tomorrow at midnight. So that's Thursday and Friday. So if you would love to create or improve your author website and newsletter starting in this new year and use it to massively grow your platform and your readership, definitely check out the discount code that I have in the description below that is good for the next two days. And I would love to have you join the course. We also have a Facebook group where I give live feedback every single month to any of our boot campers, even people that finish their website course, I still give feedback on things that they want to be improving going forward. Now, like I said, these were my goals for 2019 and how I went about accomplishing them. But if you want to hear about my goals for 2020 and how I am making my game plan again to accomplish them, definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button because it is coming out probably the first week in January. I'm super excited to share everything that I'm planning. And now that I'm feeling better, I am also thinking about doing a video Video where I share my top 10 videos from this channel. So especially if you feel like you've missed a lot this year, or if you are just finding my channel, um, I wanted to highlight a bunch of the videos that you guys have found most helpful. So let me know if that'd be interesting to you. And I was maybe thinking about doing a video where I talk about the top books that I read. They would specifically be young adult fantasy and maybe a couple sci-fi books. Um, so if you guys would be interested in seeing that as well, definitely let me know. Otherwise, I will probably be taking a little break for Christmas and New Year's, and then I will be back again, like I said, for that goals video and everything else that I'm super excited to bring you this next coming year. Thanks again so much for watching, and in the meantime, if you want even more writerly videos, you can check out one of these two videos, and we'll see you there.